You're watching RTV News with me, Jane Mutoni. The government of Rwanda has warned the international community that's standing by and watching as the DRC spreads genocidal and hate ideologies could lead to an occurrence of the sort of tragedy that befell the humanity when the genocide against the Tutsi occurred. The Rwanda Social Security Board has announced that this June a revised list for medicines covered by the Community Best Health Insurance Scheme, Mituel de Sante, will be released and will be updated annually. A very warm welcome to the news in details. Now, the government of Rwanda has warned the international community that's standing by and watching as the DRC spreads genocidal and hate ideologies could lead to an occurrence of the sort of tragedy that befell humanity when the genocide against the Tutsi occurred. Now, Rwanda's government has also warned that it will not stand idly by if provocative actions against the country continue. This latest strain in the diplomatic relations between Rwanda and the DRC began after the latter accused the former of supporting the M23 rebel group that is fighting far desi soldiers in the eastern DRC. And during a press conference after meeting diplomats, Rwanda's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation pointed out that the world should not sit idly by as dangerous ideologies are propagated in the DRC. <laughs> Look at the genocidal ideologies being spread in the DRC to the point of politicians and police officials not fearing to go online on social media sites and calling on their people to pick up arms, things like machetes, and fight what they call the enemy, Rwanda and the Tutsi, saying our country should be attacked and annexed to theirs. In a moment, we will show you some of the things that they posted. And we asked the diplomats, with such evidence out in the open, if atrocities were to be committed, can we claim that we did not see it coming? The UN has had a military presence in the DRC for many years, and these sorts of ideologies have been taught there as they watch, and this has continued to this day. Those are the sorts of questions that we were asking them. Last week, the DRC's forces fired into Rwandan territory, the second time this has happened in as many months, and a recent RDF announcement made it public knowledge that two Rwandan soldiers had been kidnapped by Far Dese and the FDLR. The government of Rwanda has made it clear that if such acts of aggression continue, it will act to defend the country. <laughs> We talked to them and asked them what was going on, and they said they would look into it. But we have since not heard from them. Not an apology, no explanation, and no guarantee that it will not happen again. Nothing. That means if it continues, we cannot just sit here and watch as our people are shot at and kidnapped. We reserve the right to defend our borders, as does any other country on the planet. Therefore, if the attacks continue and the security of our nation is threatened, we will defend ourselves and you know very well that we possess the capabilities to do that. We do not want a war and we have no reason to want such a thing. What we do not know is why the DRC would want a war at this time. They may want it for their own reasons that we are not aware of, but we do not wish Rwanda to be dragged into it. Rwanda, meanwhile, has a lot to plan for and is busy proceeding accordingly. In general, the country is fine and that is what I told the diplomats. We are preparing for Chogam towards the end of June and have already gotten confirmation from 40 heads of state and government that they will be attending the meeting. And other meetings affiliated to the heads of government meeting will also be taking place to do with the youth, women, business, civil society organizations, preparations have continued and we are confident all will go well. Before that, we also have the International Communication Conference taking place from the 6th to the 16th of June. That is what we are preparing for and things are going well, in line with our country's commitment to development, including being able to host such major events. We also hope that the problems in the Eastern DRC will also be addressed by the mechanism in place and that the Congolese will settle down and realize that they have nothing to gain from another war in this region. 
The fact is many wars have already taken place and we would gain nothing from another and should instead be good neighbors and trade as we had started to do and things were going well. Rwanda's continued to categorically refute any allegations that it is supporting the M23 rebel group. The Rwanda Security Social Security Board has announced that this June a revised list for medicines covered by the community-based health insurance scheme Mutuelle de Santé will be released and will be updated annually. This was after people complained about being told to buy medicines outside their centers of treatment and required to pay 100% of their cost. At health centers and hospitals, some people have been repeatedly asked to go buy prescription medications at pharmacies outside the medical institutions, yet they paid their admitted for treatment on their medical insurance. I was told that all medicines that I had been prescribed were not covered by my health insurance, so I paid for it as private. The first time I paid a total of 16,000 Rwandan francs to cover my medications. The second time my child was sick and I spent 5,800 Rwandan francs. The third time I also paid over 4,000 Rwandan francs buying medications. These institutions were discovered by senators from the Committee on Social Affairs and Human Rights during their visit this May to identify and monitor the activities of the government in the field of health services and the Rwanda Social Security Board was summoned to give explanations for this issue. <laughs> When a person is admitted at the hospital only to be told that the medicine is not covered by the insurance and told to find it in other pharmacies, to a patient it sounds like the money they paid for insurance was a waste as they still have to buy the medicine as private. This discourages people from getting insurances and also affects the campaigns we do to encourage people to buy insurance. The senators also pointed out that in order for the services to improve, there is need for staff members to be retrained. According to the Rwanda Social Security Board, a revised list of medicines covered by health insurance is being updated and that long-term solutions have been put in place to solve this issue. <laughs> Many Sante decided to revise the list with many people participating and asked to. The list is awaiting approval, and if I'm not mistaken, it is said to be approved this coming month of June. Be it on our side or Many Sante, this issue keeps us awake. We are working on preventing the lack of medicine and for even those on the list to be available because that's also an issue. We are also doing our best to ensure that all medicines are available. <laughs> The information and the outcome of these discussions by the committee, along with the report and a resolution project, will be handed over to the plenary session of the Senate, and then the plenary session shall exchange its views, make decisions, or otherwise submit to the government or advise the government to resolve the issues that were raised. The Ministry of Trade and Industry has said that boosting textile industries in Rwanda reduced second-hand clothes from 26% to 1% in 2013, and textile industries increased from 6 to 64 industries. Textile industries owners in Rwanda have said that getting basic textile raw materials result into the affordability of clothes. Shislen Mugwaneza has this report. CND Products Rwanda is a garments manufacturing company located in Kigali Special Economic Zone. It has many employees and it provides a free lunch for all of them and those with young children are cared for at the kindergarten of the industry. Maris Mbonimutkwa is the director and co-owner of CND Products Rwanda for three years. She mentions why she chose to start the garments manufacturing company. 
I spent 23 years in this profession because I've been to so many textile industries and I've seen how they provide job opportunities and I appreciated how I contributed to textile industries in China. But I kept wishing to start industry in Africa, especially to start with Rwanda. Rwanda is a landlocked country that has no port, but when you see business environment and other advantages available, you would love to solve the issue of having no ports. That is how we started an industry. C&D Products Rwanda started with 380 employees and it currently has 4,100 with having 80% of women. It is capable of making 10,000 clothes per day. 80% of their clothes is exported because of their prices. However, they are working on increasing their production quantity and bring clothes at the local market, which would reduce the second-hand clothes imports. Employees in this industry have said that they do not only gain money from these textile industries, but also knowledge. <laughs> I knew about sewing and I was courageous. After a year, I became a supervisor. I worked so hard because I was just an operator and got promoted to supervisor, which means that even the salary increases. An operator does not get the same salary as the supervisor because leading 60 people is not the same as focusing on one machine. I kept working so hard and after three years, I was trained to be the production manager. I am currently the production manager of this industry. It's been five years since East African countries, including Rwanda, banned all imports of second-hand clothing and footwear, where they accounted for more than 25% of total tax revenue. This aims at encouraging the entrepreneurs to invest in textile and footwear manufacturing industries to replace second-hand clothing and footwear. Those working in local textile industries have said that the prices of raw materials are still high, which leads to high prices of finished products. The textile fabrics are from abroad because we do not have industries for raw materials in Rwanda. They are from India and sometimes we get them from Dubai or from China. Even them they pay taxes because sometimes they tell you that they have paid taxes. And if I used to get fabrics on 10,000, it increases to 13,000 the next day. Prices keep increasing and there are other facts that result into price changing. Figures from the Ministry of Trade and Industry, textile industries used to provide jobs for 41,963 in 2017, 71,212 in 2019, and reduced to 57,527 in 2020 due to COVID-19. The Director General of Industry Promotion and Entrepreneurship Development Department at Ministry of Trade and Industry, Evalde Mulindangaka, explains how banning second-hand clothing imports contributed in the increase of investment in textile industries. <laughs> The second-hand clothing imports got decreased because in 2013, it was 26% of the second-hand clothing imports, but it reduced to 1% in 2018. This shows that the local textile industries are working because in 2013, 13% of the textile fabrics used to be imported increased to 32%, which means that the decrease in second-hand clothing led to an increase in raw material imports to make clothes that are made in Rwanda. The Ministry of Trade and Industry introduced a system of tax exemption of basic raw materials used in the industry in order to attract investors in textile industries. However, in the long-term plans, basic materials needed in making clothes will be brought to Rwanda to reduce the cost of new clothes. Shislen Mugwaneza, RTV News. Thank you, Jocelyn, for that report. The association that brings together energy distribution agencies in Central Africa, the PEAC, has called for more to be done to ensure better energy distribution, citing that despite the vast natural resources in the region, many people remain without electricity. Take a look. Representatives from 14 member states of the association are meeting in Kigali for the next three days to discuss this and other matters. We have the resources, but we are the least connected. So yeah, I think that there is a problem we are going to solve. We know that some of our countries are more electric, are more resources, let's say hydro or uh, oil uh, resources, 
and the other, and they are maybe very well electrified. And the other part of the Central Africa is less, has less resources and uh, consequently are not very much electrified. So if we do this, uh, uh, this, um, this connection of our grid, we can share energy uh, from one country to, uh, to another. And all this exchange used to be, must be regulated by an organ that we are going to try to put in place today. Despite the challenges, progress is being made. Malheureusement, dans certains pays, d'ailleurs je dirais dans la majorité de nos états, il y a encore des problèmes qui se posent sur le... Unfortunately, in many countries of this region, there are still many power cuts and even getting electricity installed is a problem. In many capital cities of those countries, power cuts are still rampant. But it is encouraging to see that they are doing their best to resolve such issues. For example, over the last 10 years, countries like Rwanda, Angola, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea and Chad have done a lot that should be commended, but much more still needs to be done. The establishment of a regional energy market should go hand in hand with the proper mechanisms being put in place as a basis for its establishment. La mise en place des textes juridiques réglementaires institutionnels, la Coréac fait partie de ces institutions, fait partie de ces de ces je dirais institutions de base pour la création d'un marché régional. Rwandan officials see the opportunity such a move presents. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, for the nation as, 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 as Rwanda. We are already in, in, in East African uh, uh, power pool. So having the, this uh, Central African countries uh, is also an added uh, opportunity for the nation, especially uh, as Rwanda that has invested a lot in, 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 uh, in, in electricity. Uh, we are projecting to have even excess electricity in the coming uh, one, two years. So uh, this would be an opportunity uh, to have a, a global, uh, uh, an extended market so that we can be able to, 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 to extend or to export our electricity uh, and uh, also where needed, or where required, uh, we also can import. So uh, such a, a conference, such a meeting that brings together all these about 14 countries is, is, is a very good opportunity for the nation and uh, we are therefore here uh, to say we are together as, as, as nations and uh, also the projects will be standing with the supporting each other uh, as countries uh, to make sure uh, we have enough electricity uh, to, to develop our nations. Participants in the meeting will have to decide on the location of the headquarters of this association that brings together energy distribution agencies in Central Africa. And many have submitted Rwanda as ideal because of the country's achievements in the sector. The Minister of State in charge of social affairs, Asumta Ingawire, has called on local authorities to address the concerns of citizens in a timely manner to avoid a negative bearing on their mental health. This was echoed during the launch of the Wahoneza mental health campaign, where some people expressed concerns saying that some of the problems they face, such as conflict and injustice, are detrimental to their mental health. Isabel Masozera has this report. While attending the launch of the mental health awareness campaign in Mata Sector, Nyaruguru District, some of the residents have revealed that some of the obstacles they face in their daily lives have a bearing on their mental health. Shast, a mental health practitioner, says in addition to the effects and consequences of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, the problems and challenges they face daily stem from their willingness to to accept their situation and their mental health state because it is the only way they can be helped. The biggest catalyst for mental health issues and illness is day-to-day -day problems, obstacles and challenges. Their concerns that were raised by survivors of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi most came from people that said they lost at least three children. 
seven children. And then there are other accommodation challenges and some mentioned injustices, which obviously has weight to impact one's mental health. According to Radegon Jajuru, the advisor to Rwanda's First Lady, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, achieving a peaceful Rwanda requires prioritizing mental health, which is one of the reasons why Imboto Foundation has started the mental health campaign. We usually examine the mental wellness of the person, starting with pregnant mothers, but the foundation to everything is ensuring good mental health, and we believe, according to the studies conducted, most issues in Rwandan households affect mental health. That is why we are launching this project. In order to prevent some of the most common mental health problems, the state minister in the Ministry of Local Government, Asum Putangabire, urges local for government officials to address community concerns in real time. Mm. Oftentimes, citizens have issues that relate to mental health, and when their concerns are not addressed in real time, their mental problems become detrimental. That's why we urge local leaders to address issues that affect citizens in real time. A three-year mental health campaign is launched by Imbutu Foundation in partnership with Menelog and RBC, and it will focus on six districts, namely Nyaruguru, Musanze, Gas. Sabo, Nyagatare, Bujesera, and Nyamasheche. Isabel Masozera, RTV News. On Tuesday, the Embassy of Senegal in Rwanda remembered the Senegalese soldier, Captain Bayendiaye, who was killed on this date during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi while the serving lives of those who were being hunted. Olive Nete has this report. Bayendiaye was a Senegalese military officer who was serving in Rwanda as part of the United Nations peacekeeping mission in the country back in 1994. He demonstrated extraordinary courage and heroism during the genocide against the Tutsi, during which he saved many lives. Dr. Odette Niramirimo, one of the people he saved, says that she will always remember the heroism of Captain Bai. I can't forget the moment at the traffic lights at a place usually called Peage, where he stood in front of the vehicle we're in and said, you will kill these people after killing me. You won't kill them. I have the responsibility to take them to the airport. It was on the 3rd of May. His Excellence to do so, the Ambassador of Senegal here in Rwanda, has noted that the bravery of Captain Bai is a great legacy for the country of Senegal as well as the world in general. Captain Bai left a considerable legacy. He demonstrated it through his vacuums, vacuums of courage, heroism, selflessness, and values of humanity in general, because of the actions he accomplished. He accomplished it as a man who understood that it was necessary to come to help other people who are in need. Clarisse Munezero, the Permanent Secretary at Rwanda's Ministry of National Unity and Civic Engagement, notes that commemorating is an act of honoring the victims and also a weapon to fight the genocide ideology. Commemorating allows us to honor and restore the dignity of the victims of the genocide against the Tutsi and also to salute the courage of certain Rwandans and friends of Rwanda who publicly opposed the atrocities. The commemoration invites us all to fight against the ideology of the genocide here in Rwanda and everywhere else so that what happened never happens again. Captain Baidian was killed on the 31st of May in 1994 at the age of 36. And in 2010, the government of Rwanda awarded him the Medal of Murinzi as a hero who protected and saved the lives of Tutsi during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. When he died, he left behind a spouse and two children. Olive Nete, RTV News.
Podcast on behalf of the entire news production team. Thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Motoni. Bye for now.